Welcome everyone to Savage Lab. My name is Izzo and thanks for joining me today. Here at Savage, we experiment with game ideas until one sticks. To me, game design from the concept to the execution, it's an art, it can't be rushed. Thus, instead of a studio, I founded a lab. Savage stands for some average video game. But as you'll see from the games produced, they're anything but. I was always attracted to those simple yet powerful games like Minecraft. Its graphics were so simple, its playstyle and world rules of anything goes, you choose how to play, that's what really inspired me and went into the company's vision. The vision for Savage is to follow that model. Keep the topics low key, simple with small beginnings, and then really just stick with it if that's what moves you and grow it until it can't be ignored any longer. I want everyone along for the journey, however. Savage Lab is open to everyone. I'll be taking you guys on my journey as I grow as a game developer and hopefully inspire someone to take that journey as well. Trust me, it's not easy, but if you find it fun, this is your calling. If not, don't worry. There's content for game fans out there too. I'll also be covering different, sometimes random game ideas and how I try to make them come alive. That is a part of the art after all. You'll also be included in choices for features and what's covered in further videos. This is a channel that's gonna be for everything, from brainstorm to game design to play. I'm here to grow and share that growth. I hope you guys join me. For the rest of the video, I'll just be introducing myself and showing some early clips of what's going to be on the channel. So, let's get to it. Okay, so while I was recording the intro, um, actually I ran into a bug in one of the games that I was recording, it's the snake game. And I figured why not fix the bug on screen with you guys while I'm explaining a little bit about myself and where I pretty much come from with coding. So, let's get into that too. Um, the bug with the snake game is it's actually a pretty simple bug what happens is is when you go and you click off the screen um, the window of the game it actually loses focus and then when you come back into the game it's called regaining focus the window regains focus and when it regains focus the game works as it's supposed to but the the um, stuff up top the minimize maximize and the um, the exit button, it doesn't work anymore. It's not responsive. So I'm gonna be fixing that and also just talking a little bit about what's going on. So I've actually been with, I've actually been designing games, de like designing games since I was about seven years old. My passion started with a site called Sploder that allows um, the creation of games very quickly. Quick little backstory, the reason why I found Sploder was because I was actually looking for a way to make Pokemon cards. Um, by this point in my life I actually never really thought about game design like that. I love video games at the time, don't get me wrong, but game design honestly just wasn't there and it's probably because I was young. Um, so Sploder basically is really just a, it's like a maze creator, um, kind of, but like instead of like just you're creating a maze, these different game objects are fully coded and when you drag and drop them into different areas of your game map it does different things. Um, from what I remember back in the day, the main objective of your game would be to collect all the crystals in the level and avoid all the enemies and different traps that you could possibly fall into. By 12 is when I actually started taking it really seriously. I got sent to summer camp for it um, and I learned how to make games on a program called Multimedia Fusion 2. Um, what we refer to that as is a WussyWig editor. It's W-S-Y-G or W-S-Y-I-G and it's a what you see is what you get editor. So pretty much you make your own graphics or you use theirs, you drag them in and then you go in the logic that you're actually coding into it. It's not real coding. It's pretty much just like your pictures and it's events and the events are driven by if then statements kind of thing. Um, up at that point, I never really touched any programming languages. I was more on the game design side. There's a couple different ways that you can go about it. You can either go game design, game development, or you can even just make game assets. I wanted to just go the game design development route. So it wasn't until about 18 that I actually started learning how to code with like real coding languages. The first language I tried to pick up because it seemed so simple was Python. I actually did get a kind of a good grasp on Python, but this is something where really if you don't use it, you lose it. So I don't really remember how to code in Python and I actually started taking on C++ afterwards. I took on C++ originally for Unreal Engine, but I never actually really got into Unreal just because of how dense C++ really is. That's kind of also what got me though. I never really quit on C++ to this day. I'm still using it. 
the snake game actually it's coded in c so i'm actually the snake game itself is actually building me up on how to learn how to make an actual engine with coding so i'll be taking you guys on that journey as well where i basically go through and i learn certain games and stuff like that how to do certain things and then i'll be applying it to different ideas that i have as well um the whole time i was doing this though i was actually working on getting my own game released as an indie developer i was using the next version of multimedia fusion 2 which is called click team fusion 2.5 Click Team Fusion 2.5 with that one when I the first game idea I the first game idea I had sorry was a game called King's Gambit. King's Gambit was a game about a rightful king fighting to get his kingdom back. He was basically kicked out, cheated out of his kingdom, and now he has to find a way to get back. I got bored with that concept though, and one of the real reasons why I got bored with it is because the map that I made was pre-made, and pre-made maps for me at that point it was kind of boring. I always liked to do. I always was interested in random gen back to my minecraft roots random generation there and then also like mobile games like temple run and stuff like that that's really where i was at so finally with quick team fusion 2.5 i actually figured out how to get random generation to work correctly that's when i started playing around with the new concept that i called codename all night it was actually called that because it was just supposed to be an all night project that was it was pretty much just like a distraction a refresher just for me to try to get back into king's gambit what ended up happening is codename all night took over pretty much my entire mind i used to be in college i used to be in class just drawing up concepts for codename all night every just i used to have so much fun with just designing and developing the game that it pretty much became the main game that i wanted to get released um I had a lot of problems with Codename All Night though. One of the biggest problems is that the ideas that it ended up, I ended up wanting to put into it, it became too expensive in time to really try to get going. So what I decided to do was step down from working on Codename All Night and actually get another title going that's a little bit easier on me development wise and then come back to Codename All Night later. So basically, little fun fact also within all of this i have no games officially released right now i did release codename all night for a second but it failed and i wanted to make it better and make it basically so it wouldn't fail um but that's also just part of the game as well when you're an indie developer especially starting out like i i had zero experience in the industry when i first started making the game so really instead of taking it as a failure this is just Codename All Night has become one of my biggest lessons. Okay, so for the final part of the video, I'm going to actually be introducing everyone to Codename All Night, and I'll also be playing it. Like I said, the first iteration of Codename All Night was supposed to be a random gen zombie shooter. The mechanics were supposed to be very simple. The first feature I want to introduce you guys to, since you're seeing it now, is looting. Looting was pretty much designed to be the backbone for how to get stuff in-game. The inspiration to make it so big came from Borderlands. Their looting mechanics were so fun to play around with and so rewarding that I just wanted this to be a, I wanted the looting system to be a big part of the game. I wanted that reward to be in there too. It seems like a hopeless struggle to survive, but then as you keep looting and stuff like that, that struggle just becomes less hopeless. Um, the next thing I want to bring up is the game's perspective. As you guys can see, it's a side-scrolling game and I want to say it's loosely based on a platformer. I wouldn't say it's a strong platformer because of the fact that like when I think platformer I think more Mario Bros and I think more like you gotta jump and dodge different ground hazards and you gotta make sure that you don't fall down one of the different little gaps and you, you know you keep your life and if you move too fast or you move in a different careless way that can end up costing you a life and you would have to restart from a checkpoint or something like that. Konem All Night clearly is designed a little bit differently. Um, what you're seeing me do right now is actually just gather some trees. There's three different materials in game that you can actually use to craft with. There's a crafting system in the game, and so the three materials, one of them is wood, the second one is stone, and the third one is iron. I kept it short and I kept the ingredient list small, number one, just because the timetables for the game, I didn't really have the time to be sitting there trying to like, okay, what other items can I add in, what can I do? And at the same time, I also wanted a challenge for myself. Like, I wanted to be like, can I actually make three items, make it make sense for all three items in this to add up to every item that you can craft? 
It was fun, but at the same time, like I said, it was challenging. The next part that I want to bring up is the combat system. Um, the combat system consists of one gun, and that one gun is supposed to be highly modifiable. When I was first putting in the game, my idea was if I make one gun and make it highly modifiable, it's kind of like the player is leveling up, but without leveling up. And at the same time, it keeps the complications of having to think about what type of, how many different types of every gun do I want to put in the game? How am I going to go about that? Just a lot of different things that I would have had to think about were curbed, were curbed in that. So there's actually a machine that you would use in order to put the barrels on the gun. There's two different barrels in the game. One of them is the assault barrel and the um, other one is the shotgun barrel. The shotgun barrel actually, um, it gives you higher damage, the highest damage you can get out of a gun and it, the bullets spread. The assault rifle, higher firepower and higher, and um, higher rate of fire as well. Um, from here, that's where I started thinking about base building. And base building, the way that it got started is first the perspective of the houses that you're seeing. As you can see, it's like a real front view and then when you try to go inside the house, it turns into like um, an interior view. That was something that was really big for me to get right just because of the fact that like this is supposed to be a zombie survival game so when you go inside of a house every house has walls and so keeping those walls healthy keeps the enemies out so there is a little there's a little bit of tower defense to it and it gets a little bit crazier once you really get into it because there's these things called house cubes house cubes are pretty much like mobile easy to place bases place them down you click on them and you have the full house that right there allows you more control over where you stay at and also more shelter from the different dangers that you'll encounter at night. Um, there's a lot more to the game. Remember, it's supposed to look average but be anything but. I just won't get into all the details today. This is just the intro to everything, but this game is going to be a huge subject for the channel. I want to take it apart with you guys, talk about my regrets and mistakes, and also continue to develop it here as well. As for Savage Lab, the main pro the main flagship product for the lab, I'll be talking about in a few videos, maybe a few weeks. Just I'm waiting for all the paperwork to come back and get that in order. But that's it for today's video. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think, what I should do next, and what you're excited to see. Um, welcome to the lab. <laughs>